Ah, it's time for my favorite podcast of the week. It's prediction week or time or whatever. It's when we let you know exactly what's going to happen. You are Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me, Jimmy Stein, that's him. This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. We'll talk about LinkedIn in just a minute. Um, Jimmy, it's time for our prediction show for the week. Uh, we always like to start with player predictions. So what I'm going to do here is start with Jalen Milrow, obviously. Uh, Milrow has – he's averaging – I don't know. I got. I guess I got to do some quick math here. One one five nine divided by five. He's averaging about two hundred and thirty-one yards passing per game. Pretty good. So, yeah, it's pretty good. It's it's very good. It's really nice. Um, of course, you could make the argument that this. Uh, and I'm only using five games when really you're supposed right. to use six, even though he didn't play in the fifth. We know this. So, uh, against South Florida. So. My question is, does Texas A and M skew the numbers? And do you but or do you think I guess I'll just put it this way over under 231 yards passing for Milrose there? Uh I'm gonna go um under just for, for this for this reason. I think it's going to be a focus. I'm sort of predicting a focus and a breakout game of sorts for Alabama on the ground. And uh and, and, and Alabama sort of builds a big lead, really running the ball, and, and we we don't see Jalen throw it as much. I certainly won't be surprised because I think through five games, what we've seen is what he is. I, I think he's completely 100% capable of throwing for 230 yards against Texas, uh, against Arkansas or even more. But uh, I, I see sort of a big weekend on the ground for Alabama and Milrow. Um, okay, let's take it another way then. How about rushing? And our leading rusher averages about 74 yards a game. That is uh, Jace McClellan. I'm going to say over for him. I, in fact, I'm going to make a prediction. Alabama has its longest run of this season against Arkansas. Love it. Love it. Love it. Think it will also happen. I love that prediction. I'm going to say – I'm going to go uh, Jace, Jace 150 and Jalen 100 and Jalen 100. Jace 150, you, Jalen 100. They both have long runs, too. Uh, you've gone into crazy talk. Um, but I like it. I like crazy talk. Also um, like a big run from Justice Haynes in the second half. Okay. All right. Let's give I, him I'm a, down with that. Let's give him about 80. I, I'm certainly down with that. Um, <laughs> I'm just passing out rushing numbers <laughs> like I'm uh, – uh, you know, some some billionaire that walked into a bar buying shots for everybody. I'm just I'm just throwing out rushing yards. You know what's weird is Alabama only has 862 yards total rushing yeah. this year. That's that, that's, that's why. Nuts. You know, my one of my favorite football terms when it comes to predictions, Luke, is market correction. Here here it comes for Alabama in the run game. Alabama runs the ball better than the numbers show. And I know that that you are what you are, you know, but Alabama is better running the football than those numbers say. The market correction's coming when Alabama sort of has a monster game on the ground to start evening things out a little bit. And and I think it could be this Saturday. If I'm wrong, it'll be a future Saturday. But I, I think it's this Saturday. I see Arkansas sort of bottoming out I, I, in, in terms of I think this would be their fifth or sixth loss in a row. It would be Alabama's fifth win in a row. Uh, I think those two meet in in, in it's sort of a, a good game statistically for Alabama. Um, and here's the thing. Arkansas, I mean, Alabama's 10th in the SEC in rushing with only 862 yards. That is low. I mean, they're only averaging 143 yards a game rushing. That is not good, especially considering we played South Florida. Um, but, you know – Here's statistically that game that's the game that skewed things i wonder if we could replay that game with jalen that and is we true win, and we win 42 to 3 instead of 17 to 3 yeah and jalen throws for 250 and we rush for 250 oh well yeah no that's a great point that south florida 
you know, you probably shouldn't even figure South Florida into a lot of these statistics because actually defensively we were great. Um, but offensively we were so disjointed. Um, but Arkansas only has 669 yards rushing on the year. So they only average 111 yards rushing, which is crazy to think about considering Ooh. they have an offensive line at line guy as the head coach. They have a, a, a decent running quarterback and they have Rocket Sanders. I know he's been beat up, but still yeah. they, they are a school known for rushing the football. They really are. And uh, yeah, they just have a lack of dude problems with, with Rocket Sanders out and, K.J. Jefferson, just not as dynamic, I think, as he was when he was younger. Hey, I looked up these stats today. Speak, do, doing. How about this? K.J. Jefferson, this will be his fourth appearance against Alabama, his third start. But his fourth appearance, he has thrown for 499 yards against Alabama on uh, roughly 60 pass attempts, which means it's, 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 it's efficient. It's not awesome. But uh, four touchdowns, no interceptions. He's never thrown an interception against Alabama despite – all those pass attempts, but he's only rushed for about uh, 50 yards on 38 attempts, which tells me we sacked the heck out of that guy because because he he's a kind of running, you know, he's a running quarterback, so he's going to make some yards in the rush game, but 50 yards on 38 carries to me, that, that says we've sacked him a lot. I think that's what's going to continue. I, I don't think he's got the twitchy quickness that he had a little earlier in his career. I think all those sack totals, not just against Alabama, have added up over the years. And uh, and 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 boy, Alabama's going to get to him Saturday. But man, he's played against Alabama a ton. Sixty career pass attempts, four hundred ninety-nine yards, and this will be his third start against the Crimson Tide. Yeah, I'm going to make another prediction that he uh, he does throw a pick this weekend. And one of the yeah. reasons is we are so much more aggressive on defense. You know, he was playing against Pete Golding's defense and. Again, I'm not trying to take all these. I think the uh, hatred for Pete Golding is over the top for most people. But the fact of the matter is we weren't as good defensively under Golding as we are right now. So, And we're more aggressive now. So I think we will get a pick on him Saturday. And here's the other thing that's scary if you're an Arkansas fan. You've already played LSU and Ole Miss. So you've already played Pete Golding again, by the way. Um, but you played an LSU team that is defensively just not very good. And you still only have 669 yards rushing on the season. That's that's yeah. got to be a little frightening for him. I mean, and you know BYU. I, I'm not going to pretend to be a Mormon expert, but I don't. I doubt their defense is anything to write home about. So, you know, they've yeah, that Texas A&M. Yeah, their defense, their rushing defense is very good. We just found that out. But the, this these other teams. I mean, they should have a lot more yardage than that, if you ask me. And Jimmy, when we come back, we're gonna give our actual score predictions for this game. But right now, I want to tell everybody about LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be one hundred percent certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team and helps you find them faster and vote for free. All you got to do is go to LinkedIn Jobs, add your job, and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you are, yes, hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and who you'd ultimately like to hire. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to and helps you find them faster and for free. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnCollege. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnCollege. Now I'm going to put the little thing here because I've Forgot it right there. There it is right there. Um, that's LinkedIn.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions, they'll, they'll, they'll apply. All right, Jimmy, score predictions. Yeah. Just break it down for me, Brad. I, you know what? I'm gonna go first. To he, to he, Feel free. Um, Feel free. Go, You're the very likely to be more 19. accurate. The spread is 19 and a half. Um, what I worry about is an 11 o'clock homecoming game that uh, just at the, the energy won't be there. Is a little bit what I'm worried about. The weather is going to be fine, though. I also feel like while my initial inclination is to believe the energy won't be there from the crowd, and that might be true. In fact, I think some of the crowd may be like, um, I'm going to save my energy for next week against Tennessee because we owe them. <laughs> and um, while I think that may be true, I think the energy for the team is going to be there. This is still a young team that's coming together, and it's not a team – look, 
calling a spade a spade, this Alabama hadn't won a national championship uh, in the last three years. So, I mean, two and a half years. So this team isn't quite as spoiled as some, and I, may, if they were, I think that's been taken out of them by now. So I think Alabama is going to come out and play really well. I don't think Arkansas has a ton to play for at this point. And I feel like uh, Arkansas is sort of limping through this game and looking on the back half of their schedule, which is much easier. You know, they've already played LSU, one of the best teams in the West. They're about to play Alabama, which is the best team in the West. They've already played Ole Miss, which is one of the top teams in the West, and A&M. They've played the top four teams in the West after this weekend. They've got Auburn. They've got Mississippi State left. Uh, they've got uh, Missouri left. I mean, they can beat Missouri. So I think mm-hmm. they've got a lot to look forward to, and they've just got to get through this game and make sure nobody's dead. So I think Alabama wins in kind of a runaway. I've seen some of the other predictions from like AL.com, et cetera, and they all have something like 31 to 15 or 31 to 14 Alabama. I think it's going to be more points for the Tide. I'm going to say 45 to 14. Wow. Man, I wish I had the the guts to predict that uh, because I like the score, and I can see it playing out exactly as you say. And I have the game a little closer than that, but I'm with you in the sense that I think Alabama wins this game handily. I I, I don't think it's going to be a game that Alabama sweats out. You know, Alabama's only led at halftime twice this year. We've sweated out a lot already. (laughs) I don't think Alabama will sweat this out. I think an improving Alabama, uh, I don't want to say coast. I don't want to say autopilot. But I sort of mean those things in the sense I don't think Alabama is going to play flat. I don't think Alabama is going to play terrible. I also don't think they're going to play inspired or great. Uh, I I think they just sort of the 11 a.m. kick uh, coming off a real emotional win over Texas A&M means that this probably won't be the A-plus performance. Uh, I think and and Alabama won't need it, frankly, not A-plus, but you need to play well because Arkansas has got – some athletes, they're well coached, and KJ's a good player. So I like Alabama to win 34 to 17 in a game that's not as close as that sounds, even though a 17 point win's not exactly super close. But uh, I, I think it's a it's an easy 34 17 behind big plays for both teams. Uh, I don't see either team just driving the ball 80 yards all day long. I, I think both teams score. Uh, their points, Alabama will score about four touchdowns in this game, probably all by big play. Uh, I, I like the ground game here, Luke. I like uh, Jace big. I like Milrow big. I like Justice Haynes in the second half to uh, come up big. And uh, and Alabama wins easily. And and, and uh, I'd be just super proud of this team for winning five in a row after that, that Texas loss. Yeah, I feel like um... – there's a there's an opportunity here for a, a nice long run for a, a Jace who hadn't had one since I I'm gonna venture to say Texas. Texas last year. Well, he didn't have another 80 yarder like that. I mean, he might have had some 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 30 and 40 50 yard runs. I think he might have had a big one against LSU on a pass play, maybe uh, that he, he caught a ball from uh, from Bryce yeah. and, and, and ran That's a long right. ways. But, but in terms of a run play, no, he, he's overdue for one of those. Seems like we get those against Arkansas. The 80-yard, I can remember 80-yard touchdown runs from the backs and maybe from an Amari Cooper on the first play of a game against them. Uh, but anyway, I, I like Alabama. Yes, Shaw Williams. Boy, that's in the way back machine. But no, I, I like Alabama to, to play fine, to play fine and win easily. But uh, I, I, I don't – I'm not going to predict the score getting away from Arkansas, but it could. It could. And I'm with you, I, by I the think, way. I, th- I think Arkansas wins out after after today. They win out. They won't lose again. Um. Okay. I can – you know, I, I want to pull up their schedule real quick before I go yeah. with you on that. The, I mean, because, the toughest one would be Missouri at the end. But I, I, I think once they're on a winning streak, get some of these injured players back, and, and they're winning, and it's KJ's last regular season game. I mean, I, I like Arkansas maybe to even beat Missouri at the end. Well, here's here's what they have left. They have um, they have Alabama, then they have Mississippi State, then they have an off week, and then they're at Florida. Now, look, I, I think they're better than Florida at the Swamp. Who knows? Who knows what kind of 
state Florida will be in, and Florida will be coming off the Georgia game. So that could be a good spot for them. Then they welcome in Auburn. I certainly think they can beat Auburn. They be, they play FIU, who got drilled last night by UTEP at home. And then they do welcome in Missouri. So, yeah, I don't think it's far-fetched yeah. to think that they went out. Beating Florida at Florida is a thing. Winning those two SEC West games is a thing. And, again, I'm assuming Arkansas gets healthier after Alabama – and uh, I'm just sort of seeing bottoming out, bottoming out, and then then bouncing, you know. Uh, but hey, that will that that'll be their thing. Alabama will be off doing its thing, and Alabama's got some tough tough games coming up. Uh, Tennessee next week, in particular, boy, I, 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 that's going to be emotional for the fans and for that football team. They have to exercise some demons against that Tennessee bunch. Yeah, there's no doubt. All right. So when we come back, we're going to give predictions for around the SEC and some big games around the country. But right now, look, if you're interested in those games, then you want to go check out FanDuel. Snap into action this NFL and college season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's so easy. That's $200 in bonus bets if you win or if you lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to kick off the NFL season or just to get involved with the college season. Look, it's no better time than the present. And FanDuel is an official partner of the NFL. And I the forgot NFL. to put the little thing down there, so I'm going to put NFL. it down there. The NFL. FanDuel. <laughs> NFL. There you go. FanDuel.com slash locked on. You need to um, – we need to get us a producer. I think I've figured this out. Yeah. How about we Roz need to- on Frazier? She was a good one. Roz on Frazier? <laughs> She's got to she produce this radio show. Oh, we you shouldn't know, say that because she probably is. Well, no. I, you know, I've told Her name you is Sports- Perry Gilpin. That's right. Perry Sport- Gilpin. On Sports Blitz Live that I do on Tuesdays, uh, my co host does a thing where he asks me, alive or dead? And he just gives me famous people, and I have to guess if they're alive or dead. And I've got to be batting about 15%. The people that really? I know are dead are 100% I alive. I think I'd be pretty good at that. But, man, it is pretty insulting when you say someone's dead and, in fact, they are alive. <laughs> you know, some of these people – We I ought to do that here. It's a, it's a fun – here, let me give it to you. Gene Hackman. Alive or dead? He's, he's Gene alive. Hackman. You're right. See? Yeah. You can't be batting 15%. You knew that one. That's good. He's alive. Well, that's, that's pretty easy. He's 90 something and he hasn't been acting in years <laughs> but sometimes uh, i don't right, know Jimmy. carol carol burnett i think she recently died no she's alive dang okay <laughs> see I'm, I'm like in my head i'm like going through the in memoriam on like the the emmys or something anyway um okay so let's talk about around the sec i'm not going to bring up georgia vanderbilt that is a why cbs do you want to put that on at 11 o'clock? Why? 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 When you could have put – you could have – I mean – It's a bad weekend done. for SEC games if Georgia Vanderbilt's on CBS. And, and and by the way, I mean, give Georgia, you know, their flowers. I mean, God, I hate saying that. I'm never saying that again. Remind me, everybody. I'm never saying that again. Uh, give them their what? I don't like your flowers. I've, I've heard people on TV say this. Giving them – instead of saying props or respect – it's giving them their flowers. Don't, yeah, don't I, say I, that anymore. That's terrible. It's terrible. I'm never. I said it once, and that's it for me. Uh, Georgia's going to crush Vanderbilt. Uh, Georgia playing really well, uh, and, and you know who's good now, Carson Beck, and you know who's good now, Jalen Milrow. And and guess what? They were both first year starters with good teams. How long did it take them? Half a season. And and can we all, as fans, just remember this next time around when you have a brand new starter that you know. If he's a talented kid, it's probably going to take about half a season. <laughs> and it has, and they're both good players. There's no way. Milrow and Beck, by the way, are the two least experienced quarterbacks in the SEC. And, and, and now if you're ranking the quarterbacks in the SEC, they'd both be near the top. Um. Okay, so I just said we're not picking that one, and then you went off on five minutes. Thanks. Well, man. George George is going to crush them. Yeah. Uh, just give me a winner, Florida, South Carolina. No reason to spend any time on it. South, Carolina. South Carolina. Me too. South Carolina, they're a better team. Okay, Missouri, Kentucky, sneaky, interesting, but there's no way in heck I'm watching it. (laughs) 
it's kind of one of those games like can't this be a Thursday night game or a Wednesday night game because oh, yeah. I would be fired up about that being a Wednesday or Thursday game but I'm with you Luke I'm not going to not watch Oregon Washington or not watch USC Notre Dame because Missouri Kentucky's playing but it is interesting it's fascinating as to okay is this the team that's the second best in the east or the winner of this game plays Tennessee to find out who the second best team in the East is. I mean, that that's interesting to me. I would pick either team at home. Uh, it's at Kentucky. So I'm going to go Kentucky. Also market correction time for Devin Leary. I know he's not this bad. I know he's not, he can't be market correction time for Devin Leary and Kentucky wins the game. All right. Auburn LSU. I mean, I look, I think LSU runs away with it. I, I know Auburn had the off week, but in the end, LSU's weakness is their defense, and I'm not. Auburn hadn't scored, hadn't passed for over 100 yards in the last power six, power five games. I don't think they can take advantage of it. So I, I mean, and meanwhile, Auburn's defense is kind of salty, but I don't think they they're, they're going to be able to stop do this. Jake Daniels, they're not going to stop. Yeah, Jake I think Daniels this is going to be like a 24 point win for LSU. Yeah, I mean, this one looks so obvious to me. I probably should bet on Auburn because it yeah, looks with you so that. obvious to me that this is going to be 42 to 10. Yeah. 42 to 10 looks obvious to me. So, therefore, everybody go bet on Auburn because college football can't be this easy. College football I, can't be this easy to predict. Texas A&M and Tennessee, <clears throat> two things. Ooh. I Ooh. love the game. I do love yes. the game. I don't know who I'm pulling for. Yeah, me neither. Huh. I'm not well, sure. What's I, better? What's better for Alabama? I mean, I, I, do we want tech, Tennessee limping in here after a loss, or do we want a bigger game? Because if Tennessee beats A&M, this Tennessee game is pretty big nationally. Huge. You know, yeah, huge. If, if, if Tennessee now, we wins – we won't be game day because next week is also Ohio State, Penn State. That'll be game day. You can bet on that. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. And and they wouldn't – I don't think they put us on again after Texas. But, hey, you know what? Uh, I, Texas A&M has more good players, but I have no faith whatsoever in Jimbo Fisher to, to find a way to win, even though he's got more good players than Tennessee. Uh, it's at Tennessee – I say a and m a and m real close. They, they just have more good play. If a and m doesn't win this game, I mean, come on, a and m. I mean, you got all those dudes. Use your dudes. Win the games. No, and I'm gonna say this. I think a and m wins too. And I think it's um I, I think this is I've thought about it while you were talking. I think this is better for Alabama. Now, you could say, well, don't you want a and m and LSU and everybody else to lose in the West? So, I think Alabama's got the West. I feel very confident about that. Um, so w- what I think is best for Alabama is if A&M continues to keep Jimbo Fisher and he keeps doing what he's doing, which is middle-of-the-road stuff. I don't want A&M to backdoor into a Dan Lanning or somebody that I think is better and that can recruit just as well, if not better. So I- I'm what's better for Alabama – is AM to win this game, even though it doesn't necessarily help us in the West. Now, real quickly, um, Oregon, Washington, that's the game of the weekend. If you ask me, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait to watch it. I, I'm going to pick Washington. I love Penix. And also, I cannot root for Bo Nix. Um, I think his story is kind of great, but I, I have that mental image of him looking up at the scoreboard like this, all pouty possum, when he couldn't play in 2021. And, uh, we crane kicked him with that two point conversion. I just have that mental image, and I'm like, I just can't, I can't pull for Oregon. So um, I love Dan Laning. I would be fine if he succeeded Saban, but um, I, I'm going to say Washington wins this because it's at Washington too. Yeah, I'm pulling for Oregon because of all their Alabama ties, and you could even count Bo Nix as an Alabama tie in the sense he's from Alabama. Uh, but Kyrie Jackson, Trayshawn Holden, Dan Lanning himself, Tosh Lupoy is their defensive coordinator. Uh, but Washington at home for the same thing. I said this about Missouri, Kentucky a while ago, which is a little bit more like they're, they're the uh, what are they, the opening act for, for Oregon, Washington, uh, in terms of, of how big the game is. But uh, if that game was at Missouri, I would have picked Missouri. But it's at Kentucky, so I'm picking Kentucky. I'm picking Washington because this is at home. If it was at Oregon, I would pick Oregon. 
but it's at Washington. I'll go with the Huskies. I'll go with Penix over Bo Nix slightly, which is about where I'd have Penix in the Heisman race. Penix over Bo and others slightly. Uh, I like Penix to make a bit of a Heisman statement Saturday. Uh, Caleb Williams is playing fantastic, and USC is really good. But I, I, I'm just convinced voters don't like voting for the same guy. They hold him to a different standard, and they're gonna they're gonna get a, uh, they're gonna have a crush on a new guy like Michael Penix from a new school. So uh, Penix over Bo Washington over Oregon. Penix becomes the uh, Heisman darling. Um, I have a question. Has, and I'm trying to look it up. I was hoping you were going to talk longer. Has uh, Washington Husky ever won the the Heisman? No way. I mean, if so, it would have been back, you know, back in the the black and white TV days. I mean, before <laughs> before me and Bino Cook were alive. Uh, you know, it, it would have been a while back. They've certainly had some really good players over the years. They have. They've had good quarterbacks over the years. They've produced a lot of NFL quarterbacks over the years. But uh, Penix is is how about this? Penix is from Florida. Not many people know this. Well, I mean, a lot of people know where Michael Penix is from, but we don't talk about it a lot in the South. But there's a kid from the South, from Tampa, uh, unoffered, unoffered by the entire SEC that signed with Indiana and now is a major star. Uh, boy, good players everywhere. But yeah, Penix is a Southern football player. And so no, I'm Nick. looking here. They they have never had a Heisman winner. Um, that's kind of wild. And do you know Alabama you is – If you haven't seen Washington, Luke, and everybody listening to this probably hasn't seen Washington, they have a wide receiver that – watch that dude, Rome. Uh, 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 I don't know. I, I'm going to butcher his his name because I don't, I don't see him play on TV enough. I just see the highlights, and I've Googled his highlights. Wow. <laughs> First round lock. And, uh, you know, behind every Heisman winning quarterback, there's a wide receiver catching those balls. <laughs> you know, and that, that, that kid's a dude. Rome Adunza. Did you, I'm, um, I'm pronouncing that wrong. Alabama is now tie, is, is now all alone in second place for the number of Heismans. You got Notre Dame, Ohio State, Oklahoma, USC all have seven, if you include Reggie Butches, which I do. And, I do. Um, it, the, and then Alabama is next with four. So nobody has had five or six Heisman winners. That's kind of crazy to me. But anyway, you know how we did that. Um, you know how we did that rant the other day on the NCAA vacating wins, and, yep. and obviously we we agreed they should never have vacated uh, Reggie Bush's Heisman. Although the NCAA didn't do that, the the Heisman people in New York did it, but they they shouldn't have done that. But uh, today's rant, which is just eight seconds long because we're out of time, uh, what when they say homecoming, one thing that's overused to me is. All the alums return to campus. We're here every week. We go to all the games. I mean, who comes to this game that wasn't coming to the other games? In fact, there's fewer people coming because there's tickets available. So my point is this, all the alums return to camp. Who's coming to campus that's not going to the games prior to this one or even after this one? I'm confused and I live here. And I, I don't get that. So, okay, it is it is sort of a it's sort of a silly tradition. I mean, now that we I mean, think about it, because and and here's the thing: it used to be like homecoming was the game with pomp and circumstance. Every game is pomp and circumstance now. There's pageantry when we play Chattanooga's junior varsity team. Right. <laughs> I mean, there's pageantry every, and I guess somebody's going to say no. Uh, the business school invites all their graduates back and they have tea and crumpets on the lawn. Do they? I mean, I graduate. Nobody sent me an invite to anything except football. My football tickets yeah. is my invite. Uh, I graduate from here. I don't get, hey, come back to campus for homecoming. Because I would respond and say, I I'm going to be there. I've been there every year since 88. I've missed like yeah. six home games in eight since 88. Plus but. Last time I went, they had some stale ass crumpets. I, you know, get your crumpet right. You can't um, eat crumpets unless they're fresh, it's particularly on the lawn. Uh, anywho, really quickly, just winner loser USC Notre Dame. I think USC wins. I'm pulling for Notre Dame in this game, like they're my second favorite team for some reason. I, I'm ready for USC to lose. I'm mad over how bad Lincoln Riley's defenses are every year. I'm, I'm, I'm mad you. about it. I want Notre Dame to win for that reason alone. I All like right, Sam Hartman, we'll be, too. What a good dude. 
He is a good dude. We'll be back after the game this weekend. Until then, roll tight, everybody. Roll tight.